tar en Windows. No, I've not told the Windows. You want to hear some of the Windows? Yeah. Well, Windows is that host in yell you were talking about. That right. It heads the ghost. Now, uh, there was a family that lived there. And, I mean, they would be the top local aristocracy mm-hmm. landowners. And they had a big family. Now, one Christmas Eve, then there was something that enveloped the house. It was like a big black cloud. And it took the house turned very cold. And the fire died away to nothing. And it was being a moonlight night. But it blocked out the windows until you couldn't see the moon or the sky or the stars or anything else. And <clears throat> this happened about a quarter to midnight. The following morning, then one of the children was dead. And they, I don't know whether they connected the two events or not, but the child was dead. And the following Christmas, exactly the same thing happened. Quarter to midnight, the sky darkened, this big black cloud appeared, and fire burned low, very cold. Following morning, another child dead. And the third Christmas, they weren't going to take any chances. They were going to leave the house, and they weren't going to stay in it on Christmas Eve and the first part of Christmas Day. So it was around midday and they were having a meal before they left to go and stay with friends when there was a knocking at the door and a servant went to the door and it was a man in a very bad state of exhaustion and he was soaking wet and he was a seaman and him and another man was the only two survivors from a ship that was wrecked on the uninhabited side of the island. They took him in and they gave him some hot broth and bread and uh, dry clothes and everything. And they explained to him about the ghost and about why they were leaving the house. And they were going to stay with friends and all that. And he said, well, look, I'm too tired. I can't walk any further. I only just got here. He said, the ship was wrecked. Me and a friend were the only two that survived. And he said, there were no houses, no lights, no nothing. And he said, I'm afraid we quarreled. Because I thought we should go this way. He thought we should go that way. And we split up. He went his way, and I went my way, and I don't know whether he'll survive or not. So he said, if you will allow me, I will stay here overnight, and I'll not, I'll not be going anywhere with you. And um, they said, okay, you can stay, but bear in mind you'll be in mortal danger. <coughs> so he, um, they left. And he went to look around the house and they had a fire in the kitchen and he stoked up the fire and uh, he was, when he looked at things to burn in the fire, cakes and wood and stuff, they had a big woodcutter's axe, a huge big axe. And he took that into the kitchen with him and put it beside his chair. And it was a big comfortable iron chair and he slept there. And he wakened up, and the fire was burned a bit low, but he stoked it up again, and he put on water to boil, and he had more food, and there was milk and bread and cheese and everything, and he had another meal, and he settled down, and he fell asleep again. And that time, he wakened up with a disturbance, and it was a quarter to midnight, and... He could hear noises outside and that was the same thing. The fire burned low and the windows were blocked out and it was as if you could scarcely breathe but it was deathly cold as well. 
So he took his axe and sort of groped his way to the door and he opened the door and there uh, was this huge, enormous black mass that was far bigger as the doorway. And he began to hack at it with the axe. But it had no much substance. The axe just went through it. And nothing much seemed to happen. But he was sort of frenzied in his attack. And eventually this thing began to retreat. And he followed it up. And uh, when it <coughs> retreated, then the moonlight came again and he could see. And it was just an enormous black mass. And that was above the ground. It wasn't touching the ground. And when he couldn't reach it with the axe, he would throw the axe up into the middle. And the axe would fall down and he would throw it up again. And he chased this thing away from the house and down the hillside. <coughs> and eventually, it came to rest. And he hacked it into the with the axe until that was just lying in a black blanket on the ground. But he was exhausted by this time. And he went back to the house and slept more. And the following morning, the man in the house, the laird, returned and asked him if he was okay. And he told them the story about the, the ghost that had come and troubled the house. And that was the same, was obviously the same as before. So the left, he summoned a lot of his tenants and they went uh, and they found this black thing on the ground and he ordered them to dig a grave, huge grave, and they shoveled it all into the grave and covered it up. And I could take and show you where that is because it's the only green place among all the heather and the moorland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the middle of the island of Yell. That's a big famous story, that one. But where did they get that one? Well, uh, um, uh, well they get there are a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of stories. <laughs>